one out in the world on the uh, Zoom Startup Scale Summit. I am Sherry Teigman. I am so excited to be here. This is amazing. Uh, amazing to witness the other speakers and to also have an opportunity to speak here today. So I am wanting to first introduce myself and then we're gonna dive into my class, which is all about the Maverick Method to Amplifying Your Success. So I am Sherry Teigman, as I said, I am a performance coach and I teach people how to create a maverick life in business. So I work on both the strategy side and the mindset side, and I kind of bridge together how this works so that you can not have yourself sabotage the business and not have the business sabotage your own personal growth. So today's class is all about you being able to create what you want in the world and not be held back by what everyone else is doing, watching your competition, worrying what's going on, worrying what you're not doing and what you are doing. And so what I wanna go over a bit about is why people get so caught in these situations in the first place, and then teach you a couple of methods to help you stop doing what isn't working. Because many people, just as Einstein will say, want a new result, but they keep repeating the same thing. And that is by definition insane to do that to ourselves ourselves and to our businesses. So let's set today's course to be today is the day where you get to choose differently for yourself and move forward in a way that is ease filled and flowing, but also really creates the kind of success that you deserve and that you're capable of. So in the entrepreneurial space, we get these mixed messages about how to charge forward and uh, create ripples in the world while standing out and being yourself, which I truly believe is very important as well as automating for scale and not reinventing the wheel because systems matters and process matter. So we get caught between the two sides of strategy is make things simple, keep things easy, and yet wanting to weave in the creativity and the uniqueness and individuality of yourself so that you can be creating what you want in the world. So when I say all of this, this is just on the strategy side of leaving who you are outside of building your business. So we have to worry about the strategy and then we have to worry about our own performance. And we have no idea how to do this because entrepreneurship is the greatest container for self-growth. You can ask any entrepreneur this who has, has their uh, little badge here of what has failed, what has worked because your strengths and weaknesses as a human being reflected in your business, feel like they are in charge of your success in your bank account. And that's terrifying that an old teacher from school who told you that you couldn't be a public speaker or your mother told you that your writing was terrible or there was someone who teased you in university and suddenly you have these old mindset things that come and trip you up in terms of your performance, your uh, passion for what you do and your ability to deliver it. So today I wanna to help you crank open that capacity for the emotional connection to yourself, to what works for you and to what will work for your audience instead of you being the bottleneck of your adult career. So that's not gonna happen on my watch. Today I wanna to show you the elements to safeguard your business growth from competition, from your own crazy mindset, as well as from a very changing world and changing marketplace as we all don't have to point out what's going on this year. This is putting us all to the test, both emotionally, financially, and strategically. So we're gonna to work today on moving away the sabotaging ways that we do what we do and figuring out what will work for you without any templates and without any hacks. I don't believe in them. So the reason why I do what I do is because I truly believe that business is a marriage of yourself and your skills. So it's a scaffold of you and your work. And while I don't believe in balance, if one or the other is too high up, not in measurement or in conversation, then one's going to topple over. If you're only focusing on your business growth and you are not becoming the business owner who can hold that level of success, hold that openness of attention and stress and pressure from the outside team management and leadership, your business is going to topple right over you. On the flip side, if you only focus on your own personal growth, and I'm a performance coach, so you know how much I believe in that, but you ignore your business and have a business model that no longer works for you, has an audience that doesn't understand what you do, your growth will topple over on a baby business that isn't working for where you are growing. So we want to bring this together into communication 
And we want to un- you to understand that this is the most important thing. So put down everything else that you think matters and just play with me for the next little bit and see what lands with you. Now, again, I am not someone who thinks that we have to all do things the same way. I am all about individuality, but there are parts of ourselves that we, from where you are to where you want to go, really need to work on so that your business is the right container for what you want to be doing. So we can focus on either strategy or mindset, but what happens is for anyone who picks one, their business growth is stunted and here's why. We naturally as human beings like to stay safe. We like to be in control of things. We like to not be mired in unknown and doubt. So we focus on the things that we think we know how to control and we can ignore what actually needs work. So if we work only on ourselves, and I trademark the the idea of I'm both woo and do. So if you work only on the your state change and the spiritual side of things and your real emotional connection to yourself and what you do, then you're ignoring the metrics and the data of what an actual business needs in order to grow. On the other hand, we have the hustle doers who try to push through who they are to get over to their success and they work only on strategy and they leave themselves out of the equation of what it looks like to build a business. You need both. So you can have the best business model in the world, but if it is not internally driven, you won't follow through on it. You won't stick to it. You will have doubt and overwhelm, lots of procrastination and imposter syndrome. And then you start to sabotage a business that may even work, but you are so tangled in your own feet, you can't get out of your own way to let your business do what it's meant to do. So we're going to head over to what I call the Maverick Method. Now, this is the kind of stuff that I do one-to-one with people, and I go on a real deep dive, understanding where the person has been, what stands in their way. And then sometimes it could be, whether it's old trauma, it could be an old job, a role, a belief system that you have. It could be habits or pat- habits and patterns that you work on. It doesn't have to be this massive tear open every flaw or wound you've ever had, but there is an importance of having an awareness of what is holding you back so you can build a business that just feels easy and fun to you. You're allowed to have that. So in this Maverick Method, I'm going to pull out six things that I want to talk about out of the bigger picture of what I teach. So the first three things that I want to cover is the three things to do to clear the decks and to reset your mind as well as your go button in your business. If you don't work on these three things, I promise you, unfortunately, you are going to be making your own mindset a harder thing to master and your business success a harder thing to connect to. So we don't want to do that. We're going to start with the three uns. The first one is unpack. So when you are willing to see what works and tell yourself the truth about where you've been, what you've tried, the failed launches, the uncomfortable investments you've made in your business, the belief systems that everyone else can have what I want and I can't have what I want, even if I look really confident on the front end, the mismatch between who you are to your clients and who you are to yourself the past versions of you that you're now carrying everywhere. So the easiest analogy that I like to use for this is let's say you go away on a weekend holiday with a bunch of friends and we all know what happens on the last night of a holiday. So rushing to catch your flight home pre COVID world where we used to get to go places and do things. You then get home and you open up your luggage and inside is a pair of socks that don't belong to you. You don't have an emotional attachment to them. You don't have a belief system about them. You're not telling a story about them, but you know these don't belong to you. So you go over to the holiday WhatsApp chat with all of your friends and say, hey, everyone, I have a pair of socks that don't belong to me. This is the point that we want to get to with the stuff that we carry that we no longer need. It could be stuff from your parents. It could be from schooling cultural, societal, religious, past bosses. It doesn't matter. You don't have to go now find the origin of those socks. You just need to learn how to unpack your luggage and take out what doesn't currently belong to you, take out what currently doesn't serve you, and take out anything that is going to weigh you down in going where you want to go. So we want to be doing a lot of unpacking, and this takes a lot of truth telling. So I have clients who will come to me, and this is what we do as our first process, whether it's in group or one-to-one, and people are terrified of this because they just want to charge forward to the sexy, pretty bits, but it doesn't work like that. 
The ironic part is you carry whatever isn't working for you every single day in every interaction that you have with yourself and with your audience, clients, and business. So it's far scarier to continue carrying without unpacking than to actually take some time for yourself, either with a coach, with an accountability buddy, or your trusty old piece of paper and pen and start to have the conversation. What do you need to unpack? What no longer works for you? Beliefs, habits, patterns, business models, pricing. We're talking practical as well as emotional. Take out anything that you don't need so you don't have to walk with rolly bags everywhere you go. It gives you the space and expansion to be able to build and create what you want, which doesn't take a long time to build if you're willing to put down what doesn't work. So that was unpack. Next, we're going to move to unbelief because what every single human being does is crave safety. So you can unpack all of this. All of your proverbial stuff is all over the floor, all over your journal, all over your coach. And then naturally Monday comes and you start putting the stuff back in the bag because it leaves a void of you not knowing a new way to do things. The only thing most people know how to do is repeat what they do in the past, whether it works for them or not. So this is why this un is so important. We can't just unpack and hope no one puts it back in the bag because you are the only one in control of this. You need to rewire your brain, rewire your goals, have things come from internal instead of externally driven. So unbelief is where we cut the strings of why we attach to the things that don't work. Well, five years ago, that business model worked. So I'm going to keep pressing that doorbell, hoping maybe it's going to work again. Last time I launched, it worked. Why isn't it working? We are so afraid of changing what we do because we don't know who we will be if we are um, not getting the results that we can measure, if we are trying new things and don't know what to do. So the key here is really to understand that anything is possible for all of us, but we have to undo what we keep doing. So that's unpacking by taking it out and then picking it up and figuring out why did I believe this in the first place? Why did it fit into my paradigm of what I thought I was going to do? And what am I going to replace it with? If you leave a void, I promise you all of the old socks will go back in the bag. It's just the nature of the beast. Don't beat yourself up for it. Just know that's how we operate. So the unbelief piece will be, what do I want instead? Well, I don't want a business model where I'm working 40 hours a day, driving myself crazy just to hit the basic numbers because I feel like that's a rite of passage of entrepreneurship. So instead of saying, I don't want that, I'm unpacking it. The unbelief part is what am I willing to let go of to build a new belief system? What if I found someone that I see has a, a business model that feels easy for me? So that doesn't mean go copy them, but we model saying, I now know it's possible. Very similar to the four minute mile. As soon as someone ran it once, all other runners were able to do this. This is the, um, your entrepreneurial four minute moment. What are you willing to unbelieve and replace it with so that you can now have a new set of beliefs and possibility for yourself to now set new goals and new drivers to then go out and create what you want. And number three is understand. So we've unpacked, we unbelieve, and now we understand where the gap is from where it is you are now with your understanding and awareness to where it is you want to go. What sort of habits do you need? Maybe there's some rituals that you have to put in place. Maybe you need some outside support. Maybe you need to put better boundaries in place. Surround yourself with better people. So if you have an understanding of who the future you will need in its back pocket of tools in order to create all the things that you just committed to yourself, between unpack, unbelieve, and understand, you are now are not carrying all the piles of what you don't need. You're clean and clear, you've learned the lessons, and now you can forge forward to where it is you truly want to be. So those are the first three aspects of the Maverick method. And to be honest with you, I work both in life and business, so I want you to know these methods will work for everything. Because we can't separate our lives and businesses, because we are the common denominator, know that if a relationship is not working, if a business partnership is not working, if your relationship to your physical body and self-care, these are all elements that a successful business owner needs to have in place. So we can use this unpack, unbelieve and understand method to work for anything because it is how a human brain works rather than something's wrong with me, I'm broken, everyone else has a manual that I don't have. 
this is the manual. You write your own manual by finding out what's going on for you. So next we're gonna to move to three more elements of the Maverick Method. And these are what I believe to be the three core elements for any successful business and any unstoppable mindset. Now I know that that's a very big claim and I'm sticking to it because I truly believe it. So like I said earlier in the woo and do crowds, there are people who wait to manifest things and they sit and there's a lot of value to getting into the right flow state, creating your own reality and following through on that, but it requires action. And then the action takers who leave themselves out are waiting for something outside of them to save them because we are all, every single one of us, caught between fear of success and fear of failure. We sit in this valley of if I budge, I'm not going to know who I am. And the most terrifying thing for any human brain is to worry that we're going to lose ourselves. There are no saber tooth tigers anymore we start becoming afraid of our own possibility. So in order to circumvent this and build a business that fits you and doesn't leave you outside of the room, but also works for clients, works for practical strategy and implementation, is able to be systemized and scaled, we need these three elements in the business. We need creativity, we need emotion, and we need logic. Now, I know that you're probably thinking, Shari, what the hell do those three ha things have to do with each other? But I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to take a quick drink. <coughs> so here's the thing. Remember, we have the business and we have ourselves. Creativity is the first bridge. Creativity makes us feel like we are innovators. We are not copying anyone, imposter syndrome stays out of the room. We put competition down and we realize we are the only ones with our personality, our history and background and the skills that we have. And you as an individual have all of your uniqueness and all that you need in that bowl that is called you that to make this work. Now that belief system comes from exercising your creativity. If I'm not someone who's good at tech and I worry about all the tech stuff in my business, what kind of belief am I going to have about what I think is possible for myself? I'll tell you a very, very tiny belief system because I'm not in my zone of genius. I am not in my creative mode and I am by nature a sparky creative. That means my scalable, systemized, grown up business requires someone else to do that role because I know I can't do it. We want to spend the most time we can in our creative genius and optimize the rest of our business to be the foundation for us to shine wherever we are. So you may not be a extroverted front end star kind of personality. So if maybe you're more the architect or the wizard behind Oz, then make sure the front end of your business supports who you are in what you wanna be doing. If you're expecting yourself to be a one man band, your creativity goes out of the window. You have no energy to actually be doing and delivering what you want. And you just feel the stress of what you don't know how to do. Beginners minds don't run businesses. Zones of genius runs businesses and then they see the holes of what else needs to be filled. So if you infuse into your business within every step of what you do, you will start to trust yourself in your business, which is then very contagious and magnetic to an audience that will trust that you know where to take them, that will buy into your messaging and your creativity, and people can differentiate you from everyone else. This playful creative energy creates momentum that moves into measurable wins, into new clients, into what else is possible, into a new idea that hasn't been played with, or an idea that has been flipped a little bit given who you are. So we want to make sure you're innovating and not recreating just to show how clever you are, which will then leave you with burnout and imposter syndrome. Not going to happen. So creativity is number one. Number two, we move to emotion. Now I am a very emotional person by nature. And when I work with my high achieving, high level executives, either entrepreneurs, startups, uh, people who have been in other industries, moving their expertise onto the online space or even offline, what I notice is they've been trained to leave their emotion out of the room, which is the worst thing for your business and for yourself. If you are not in an emotional connection with what you do, an emotional connection with who you serve, an emotional connection for what you know to be true and what you teach, and an emotional connection to the belief in your own success, 
you might as well quit your business today and go make the best coffee in Starbucks that is possible because real connection is the name of the game. Now, real connection was the name of the game before 2020, but I'm not gonna point out the obvious of what 2020 has brought up for all of us. We are all craving real human connection. That means vulnerability. That means we're not all fine all the time. That means there isn't this perfect Disney front of a business. There is messaging, customer journey, follow through and buy-in that is irreplaceable if you weave emotion into your skill. You can only scale what works organically. You can only grow what is grounded in human belief and human desire and connection. So if you leave emotion out, you can dump a ton of money into Facebook ads, they won't work. You have to know what works for you organically. And from there, you can then scale and automate and systemize anything you want because it's coming from a real place. Lastly, I'm gonna bring back full circle logic. So we've got creativity up here. We've got emotion, which connects creativity and logic. And then we have the grown up aspect of logic. Now, anyone who knows me would never think the word logic would come out of my mind, but I don't want you to have one of these pie in the sky entrepreneurial dreams that sits in a glass case on your mantle that you're hoping one day you'll be able to create. Like I said earlier, anything you want is possible if you move what doesn't work out of the way, if you make space and bandwidth to create what you want, and then become the person who can then create and deliver it. So logic is really important here because if you don't think it's really true, and there isn't a grounded basis of how to make it happen, and your own step-by-step -step process of what you commit to, there's no point. So logic makes sure that you take it off of the mantle and you put it into action that you grow as you go, that you learn by doing, that you don't keep perfecting and not shipping things, that you don't sit comparing to everyone else who has a team of 50 and you have a team of two and you can't figure out why you can't make things work. So vulnerability, as Brene Brown, the incredible uh, shame researcher says, comes from being in the ring. We don't, I think it was a Churchill uh, quote about, I'm not listening to the man who is not in the ring also getting bloody. You cannot create your entrepreneurial dream by sitting on social media, judging what everyone else is doing, mocking everyone else's launches. You've got to roll your sleeves up, bring logic into the room and say, okay, I've got this big dream. I know it's possible because I understand who I am. Now I need to put my feet on the ground, my head in, in the game, and I need to figure out what is going to work. How do I take my creativity and my emotion and make it into a tangible business, make it into a product that you really need and that you have something to go to the marketplace with? You want someone to be able to pick you up off the shelf as though they're buying a cereal box in the supermarket. That, cre that requires logic and strategy and marketing and sales know-how, but not without the emotion and the creativity. So to wrap this up, because we've got unpack, unbelieve, and understand, and then we move to the business side of creativity, emotion, and logic, now we're back to you. We've got lots of information up here, and we want to pull it all together. My biggest takeaway that I want you to have from today is to figure out what it is you want, why it is that you want it. Remember and understand and honor where you've been, respect that you may not need that anymore, and then take an honest look at where you wanna go. And I'm talking very big picture long-term, as well as short-term measurable moves to know that you are measuring your own success and believing in yourself. And then adding in an ease and flow measure a meter, how can I make this easy? How can I not overcomplicate it? How can I not try to be too clever like most of us entrepreneurs do to ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis? And then take all of that data and go plan what you will commit to, run it through these maverick filters of unpack, unbelieve, and understand, and then is my creativity here? Is my emotion here? And what is the logic of how this will fit in a marketplace? so that your future you can lead you to the next level of success instead of the past you stopping you from creating a business and a life that you want because you're running old tapes over and over again. So I hope that this was helpful. Um, my goal is to really help people find possibility for themselves, understand that by 
comparing and contrasting yourself constantly is not the way to move forward in your business, but neither is complete disruption and always rebelling. This whole maverick movement that I've created is about finding your own unique way, your unique ability to stay out of the box while having a one foot still in the regular world and building a life in a business that works for you that then serves other people to be able to create a lot of impact and change. Will you make money? Absolutely, but the money comes from the impact rather than the other way around. You don't wanna be a one hit wonder in the world. You don't want to be a diet version of someone else's business. You don't want your messaging to sound like everyone else's. So these are the things that are a rinse and repeat process to be able to work on with yourself. And if you feel like you need more support, there are a tremendous amount of amazing mentors out there who are willing to help you. It's about finding, figuring out what it is that are the missing pieces, being really honest and open with yourself, and then plugging into that. Do I have a strategy problem? Do I have a mindset problem? Do I have a mixture problem and where have I been focusing most of my attention that is leaving what my real, where my real work needs to be done? So thank you so much for this amazing time today. Uh, thank you for everyone putting this together. What an amazing summit. I'm actually gonna go listen to some more sessions on my own. If anyone has any questions, you wanna learn more about me or what I do, you can head over to my website, sharryteagman.com. Uh, you could reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram at Sherry Teagman. I love meeting new people. I think we can all learn from each other. So please reach out. Let me know that you found me or met me here on the summit and ask me your questions. Start doing some of this unpacking. See what comes up. I promise you, you'll not only be surprised, but you'll be inspired by your own growth because you'll see where the pockets are waiting for you to start uncovering. Have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you.